Hello and welcome to this ActiveHDL tutorial. My name is Chantel, and in this video, I'll be going over one of the most fundamental features of ActiveHDL, which is the workspace. So in ActiveHDL, you can group individual designs and resource files into a collection of projects called a workspace. The workspace basically plays the role of a container, and it allows you to add and work with several projects simultaneously. So to start off this tutorial, the first thing we'll need to do is, well, create a workspace. Head over here to the toolbar where you see this symbol. You can click this or go to File, New, and then Workspace. From here, we'll create our new workspace. Name your workspace and make sure to have Add New Design to Workspace checked. I'm going to call my new workspace Test. Any active HDL workspace is saved as an AWS file. Now we are directed to this new design wizard where we can add an existing design or create a new one. A design is basically a named collection of source files in active HDL. I'm going to create an empty design, then I'll go to next. On this property page, you don't need to worry about it for now. But if you want, you can change your design's default language, as well as the target technology. I'll leave this alone and click Next. Now we can name the design. I'm going to name this one Tutorial. Note that design files are saved in an ADF format. Once that's done, click Next and double check the specifications. After that's all good, click Finish. You can now see that the tutorial design has been added to the test workspace. The workspace is indicated by this yellow icon, while the design is indicated by this blue icon. With a design added to the workspace, we can now add files to the design. You'll want to go to Add New File, and from here you can add existing files, create new ones from scratch, or even use the wizards for some of the source files. These wizards will set you up with the basics of the file and from there you can add on to them. For this example, I'm just going to add a VHDL source file using the wizard. Make sure the box that adds this file to the active design is checked. And now I'll name this file VHDL underscore EX. At the ports page, add your port names and properties and click finish once done. Now you'll see how the VHDL wizard gives your code a base to work with. And notice now that the new VHDL file is added inside of the tutorial design. Feel free to add more files to your design if you'd like. But now I'm going to go ahead and add an already existing design. To do this, make sure you find a file saved in the .adf format. Right-click on your workspace and select Add Existing Design to Workspace. I'm going to use the Press Controller Example Design. Inside of the Active HDL Program folder, you can go into the Examples folder, go to Press Controller, and now you can open the Press Controller Design. And now you can see that that design has been added to this workspace. And whenever you have a lot of source files or multiple designs, you can minimize or expand them to help with visibility of your project. Now with that added, we can compile. To compile an entire design, right click and click Compile All. Just note that this will only compile the active design, not all designs. To compile the other design, we'll need to set that design to active. Just a little side note, when you set an active design, the active design will be labeled in bold text. If you add or create a new design, it doesn't affect anything in the current active design of the workspace. And when you use commands or macros or any of the GUI options, they'll only target the active workspace design. So actions such as initializing simulations, 
generating test benches, and compiling will only occur within the active design. If you did want to compile all designs at once, you actually can by right-clicking on the workspace and selecting Compile Workspace. If you want to change the order of compiling and create a compilation macro for it, click on Workspace Compilation Order and then go to Generate Macro. Or just go to Generate Compilation Order Macro. Choose your order and from there you can generate a compile macro which will then save to the active design. When you need to remove a design from a workspace, all you have to do is right click on the desired design and click remove from workspace. Uh, removing a design from the workspace won't actually delete it, so if you wanted to delete it, you'll have to open the file location where you've initially created the design to delete it. To remove a file, head into the design containing that file and right click remove. You can choose to detach the file and remove its implementation or you can even delete the file entirely from your disk. Now if you want to archive the workspace, just go to workspace, archive workspace, choose your location to save the archive file, then choose the files you want to archive. And from there, Active HDL will create the zip file of the archived workspace. And this is really handy for sending workspace files to other project members if you have any. And there's other formats you can use to send your workspace project. You can export it as an HTML or as a PDF. Go to File, Export, then Export Workspace to HTML or PDF. For HTML, name the workspace and choose the location to export to. Choose all the items you'd like to export, specify your graphical parameters, edit project info, and click Finish. You can now open this file within Active HDL or on any web browser. For the PDF, the parameters are about the same, uh, with the exception of the PDF specific options. And that concludes this basic overview on Active HDL's workspace. May this help you all when you get started on your projects, and thank you guys for watching.